This is the best way to play Sombra on Overwatch 2. Sombra is a mid-range flanker with three key things you need to keep in mind. When are you pressuring, where are you pressuring from, and who are you pressuring? In terms of when, you need to time your pressure with your team, and in terms of where it's from, it needs to be with cover, and usually with distance if you outrange your target. But that's the thing, who is actually the target that you'll be pressuring or hacking? In short, that comes down to range. Basically, if they outrange you, like a Widow, Ana, Zen, Ash, or Hanzo, that's who you're going to be focusing. But if they're running something like a Lucio, Moira, Reaper, Tracer, then you'll likely be farming their tank or their general team from range. Sombra's weapon, Lil Uzi Vert, makes Sombra shoot her SMG at 1200 rounds per minute, dealing 7.5 damage per shot with an ammo capacity of 60 rounds. Your normal DPS is 150, and if you're shooting a hacked target, it gets closer to 190. Just as a side note, so much of Sombra comes down to your general playstyle against a variety of different heroes, so these ability specific sections should be a bit shorter. The main usage of your Uzi will actually be trying to utilise the range as much as you can. Now again, this does dip into the playstyle section, but against comps you are at range like a Winston, Lucio, Kiriko, you can even be standing as far as 20 metres away, poking down a tank with the majority of your shots landing. What is the enemy? team running very important here they're running short range dive you outrange every single hero on this comp so you need to abuse that so let me put it this way your angle as sombra is dependent on the enemy composition you're gonna stand right here and you're gonna hold mouse one and monkey if you hack monkey how much pressure are you putting out right now if you hack zarya or shoot zarya or hack brick right now what are they gonna do against very spam heavy comps then your angle is less frontline-y. Because if a Hanzo wall climbs up here, you don't want to just sit here and hold mouse one here. That's when you'd rotate behind. You force the squishier glass canner long range heroes to turn around. That's where Sombra needs to angle. But the funny thing is, is against those compositions, against the sniper heavy compositions, would you be playing Sombra into those? No. What hero would you be playing? Probably Tracer. Because she's more self-sufficient and her damage threat is better. You don't need Sombra's range. Sombra's first ability, TF2 engine is teleporter. Make Sombra toss out a beacon in which she can return to it at any time. It has a projectile speed of 25 meters per second and a six second cooldown. The biggest and most obvious problem with Sombra's translocator is that players often don't know how or where to place it. The key thing with translocator is to put it in a position where it's safe, but also active. When I say active, I mean that once you translocate, you're not going to be out the fight for 5 plus seconds. You're still going to be actively contributing to the fight as soon as you translocate. Here's Jane giving and explaining an example of translocator placement on a poor shrine. So A, I put it kind of like on my side of the point. B, I put it on the high ground. Or C, I put it right on the health pack. So the thing is, if you place it on the translocator, right? So if we hack this and we place the actual translocator, we can fight, we can fight, we can fight, we can fight. Suddenly we get attacked or something like this. If we translocate, we are out of the fight. If you place your translocator here, and you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting, suddenly you get married, you're out of the fight. So what you want to be doing instead is giving yourself options. So if your translocator is on a statue like this, you're fighting, 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 or you drop to the health pack if you need it. Give yourself options. Building on this idea further, here's Bono talking about how you don't want the enemies to have line of sight onto your translocator, for admittedly obvious reasons. If you're gonna throw your translocator late, is at least have the dignity to throw it up here to where it's not as easy for the Sombra or Lucy to break it, because if you're placing it in a sight line where they can see it from main and they can break it from me, so they don't even need to send the Sombra to go break your translocator. They could just lose their sentence one volley, your translocator is broken, and then you're screwed. Referring back to Jane's Nepal example, the one by the elephant could be seen, whereas the one closer to his spawn would stay out of LOS. So if you think you could get away with it by putting it by the elephants, it still isn't a bad idea. Here's another example on Icon Ward first, with four different translocators. A, B, C, and D are probably the best options, because they're safe and hidden, whilst also being active, in that it won't take you very long to get back into the fights. Just make sure that with C, you're not placing it in the building itself, otherwise it could be seen by attackers pushing that building. With the option E though, it is an open space, meaning that it's not safe, and you're very far away from the team fights. So in short, just don't toss your translocator out in the open, and don't toss it too far away from the actual fights. Aside from that, there's times where you want to use translocator aggressively in order to reach high grounds or even set up your ENP. Just don't forget to set your translocator afterwards. Sombra's second ability, the BTEC Spy Cloak, 
makes Sombra turn invisible with a movement speed buff of 50% alongside a potentially infinite duration. The cooldown is 6 seconds and you can also hack from invis but I'll talk about that more in the playstyle section. In terms of tech, hit Fitzy here explaining the invis cancel prior to ulting. When going for an EMP is to use stealth, throw your translocator in, decloak, then translocate an EMP. This will get rid of the delay when you try to EMP after you translocate, and it will also play the voice line of decloaking at your original location instead of in the middle of the entire enemy line. In terms of usage, there's two main uses. The first is mobility, and the second is scouting. Dealing with the former, use the added speed buff from Invis to perform rollouts and to move into position quicker, either to farm a tank or to get behind for an assassination. With scouting, you typically want to scout heroes and the positions they're coming from. For example, on Lee Jang Night Market, you could see whether the enemy team would push high ground or whether they're pushing from somewhere underneath. Sombra's third ability, Hacker Man, makes Sombra temporarily disable all active and passive abilities from one enemy for 1.5 seconds, and she makes that target take 25% more damage from her specifically. Your hack also has a range of 15 meters, a cast time of 0.85 seconds, alongside a 4 second cooldown. I'll also couple in your passive too, which allows you to see enemies who have under 50% HP through walls. In terms of tech, similar to Mercy's Beam, there's a small grace period where your hat can extend beyond 15 meters. Nice to do if you need to keep the range. In terms of usage, there's two rudimentary uses of hack, both of which I'll elaborate on in the playstyle section. The first is the hack to farm ult charge. An example would be hacking a hog or a diva and farming them from range. They either have limited range or a lack of mobility, which makes them pretty decent ult batteries. The second type of hack is the hack for lethality. This is better suited for pouncing on a mobile and or isolated squishies. With your passive, the main way you will utilize this is by calling out enemies who are under half HP, as well as reassessing your target priority. That's basically it. Sombra's ultimate, Hackerman 2000, <laughs> makes Sombra discharge electromagnetic energy in a 15 meter radius, taking 0.35 seconds to activate, lasting 5 seconds, applying the effects of hack to anyone caught in the EMP. Just like in Overwatch 1, the biggest and most important aspect of your EMP is the timing. This may look simple, but if both teams have a Sombra and they both have EMP, then as you might guess, EMPing first can give you a large advantage and can diminish any follow up that their counter EMP gets. Hi, I'm about to head out. Let's talk. Your job is to EMP enemies where your team can go and kill them. You are playing in a team environment and you have managed to find a way to EMP two people in nearly inaccessible locations instead of simply waiting for them to walk out and then EMP them. I get it. Your team is like, they have EMP. We don't have B. We gotta go fast. But this is not the type of fast. If you want to hide on point and let them drop and then speed boost out from point and EMP them once they've dropped, fine. Whilst you can't eliminate basic shield HP anymore with EMP, you can still cancel things like coalescence, sound barrier or amplification matrix, so if you're being run on, EMP can quickly disable and cripple that engage. Moving on to the final section of this guide, positioning, playstyle and composition. Likewise to my reaper guide, I'll start off with the playstyle stuff first. Not because it's really simple, but for the opposite reason. I want to start off by going through an example on Oasis City Center, but don't focus on the map too much here, and focus more so on the heroes. Say you're playing Sombra against the Lucio Moira Ryan Tracer Ash. Here, you have a few options, and some are certainly better than others. And this refers back to the question I put at the start about who you target. The first option or place that you have is to mirror or clear flankers. Mirroring just means matching or facing them, so here, if the tracer decides to flank onto your backline, you could clear her out by hacking her from invis. So why would you ever want to do this? Well, if your backline is very squishy, like an Ana Zen, you can help keep them alive. And generally speaking, an Ana Zen will get more value than a Lucio Moira due to their higher damage and utility. Not to mention, you might get zone orbs too, which can help you win out that duel against the tracer. The second option is going for backline supports. This isn't really an option here, because both Lucio and Moira are slippery supports who, get this, don't have much range. And range is a super important factor here, because the third option is just farming down their tank from high grounds. And simply put, a Lucio and Moira just don't have the range to deal with you. You're not playing against an Ana Zen, who can discord you and mark you. In terms of range, you're in this weird middle ground, where you have more range than a Lucio and Moira, but less range than an Ana Zen or a Bap Zen. But here comes the fourth option with the Ash. Ash does have range, and if you stand on high ground farming their Ryan, the Ash does have enough range to toss a dynamite and potentially kill you, or at least force a translocate. As a result, 
Your option here is to duel the Ash, potentially getting behind, landing a hack from Invis, and blitzing her down, which honestly is one of your best options here. So, the way I'd play this out is to wait for the Ryan Lucio Moira to drop from high ground, and then to quickly assassinate the Ash, and afterwards, I can just farm their Ryan from high ground. Or, if you're running a super squishy backline, you can just hunt down the enemy tracer, or whatever flanker it may be. It could even be a wrecking ball in this instance. Clearing flanks also includes people like Ash, or any other immobile hero, that for some reason decides to hard flank into you. Then, you can just pounce on them and win the duel, because obviously you win a duel up close against a hacked Ash from Invis. So, as you can see, what you do on Sombra is heavily dependent on what your team's running, and what the enemy team are running too. And it's not always going to be clear cut. But the key thing to apply to your game is to always ask yourself the question of range. Do the enemy DPS and supports outrange me to where I have to get up close and behind? Or do I outrange them to where I can just take a soft off angle and beam them from roughly 20 meters away? Of course, there's going to be exceptions to these guidelines, and there will be times where maybe you have EMP and you want to focus on that Moira who just wasted a heal orb. But these general guidelines should help you a lot. As the fight progresses, the situation changes. Enemies start exhausting their resources, your team starts finding openings against the enemy, or you might just have EMP ready. When that happens, that's when you might consider taking a more aggressive position and playing more greedily. Again, you do want to adapt your style depending on what the rest of the team is playing. If your team is playing a more brawly comp, you want to be playing almost like a dime store tracer, looking for dives with the rest of your team. But if your team's playing a more spammy comp, you want to help your team control the flanks and win duels. Try to punish anyone who is playing isolated from their team. You can still look for kills, but since your team is playing at longer ranges, you have to be more careful as it is easier for you to, to get forced out. Now, before I end things off, some quick notes on your timing and positioning, referring back to the two questions I put at the start of the guide about when you time your pressure and where you pressure from. With your positioning, you really want to make sure that you have at least some piece of cover in order to increase your uptime. In that Oasis example, the high ground there was my cover, decreasing the chances of my translocator getting forced. If I wasn't dead in the middle of the point where everyone can just shoot me in the open, where would you be then? Probably maybe further to the right in the room where I could use like the cover and then hack the Ana, kind of get out of vision. You can see the mini as well, you can use that to extend your phase as well. And lastly, your timing. When you're timing your pressure, whether it be either of those four options, it needs to be timed for when either team are engaging, so they get value off the attention that you're baiting. Timing wise, is this timing of this pressure good, would you say? Watch this again from her view of you. Yeah. Okay, okay. perfect okay. timing. Perfect okay, timing. okay. How, how do you know? As soon as I forced them to look at me, my team was going in. Yes, and perfect. And it gave, it gave them room to kind of fuck with mm -hmm. whoever had to look at me, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, there will be times where I want you to go a little bit later, you to play second fiddle, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you can go, like, mm -hmm. let your Ryan get attention first, and then you go, so go second. So maybe you were a tad early here, but the target priority and the position with which you were at was the problem, not your timing. And that's it for the guides. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if this video helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time.